Hello everyone and welcome back to Crypto Atlas. Unless you are new to the channel, then guess what guys, it is nice to meet you. Hopefully you enjoy this information and you wanna come back and hang out again. If you guys would like to, feel free to subscribe for more cryptocurrency news and technical analysis. And if we can on this video, would love it if we try to push for at least 50 likes. Thank you guys so much for all of your support. And uh, if you wanna be alerted whenever we have new videos, the bell icon is a great way to do that. So let's get into the information here. We're talking about Bitcoin, Orchid, and XRP today. So first off, news that's going on with Bitcoin. Well, you can see on the daily candle, which as of the time of this video, we still got about 15 more minutes until the daily close. Um, not looking too great on the red, but it's actually not too bad because of a couple reasons. And I'll show you in a separate chart somebody posted on Twitter, which is actually, I think, really good. We're still getting this formation of new um, higher lows. So that curvature that's taking place right here, as you guys can see, is still forming a higher low, except for this point. We did have a little bit of a retracement technically, but that bounce off in that formation right there isn't too bad. Uh, furthermore, we should expect to see some cool down times during the weekend. The volatility it seems to take place primarily during weekday hours when like the stock market is open, which is funny because at the same time, we're not seeing a huge influx of people from the Wall Street side coming in and getting into crypto uh, just quite yet. Like it's starting to happen a little bit. And I talked about this in my other video yesterday, but it's not really there quite yet. So as it is, looking at Bitcoin, we still got some more moves. I'll talk about the charts, but let's go ahead and talk about what's going on in the news. So this is something to be really concerned with, but it could also be something absolutely amazing. And, you know, I feel kind of bad, but I hope that this person either cancels what they got going on and they just take a loss um, or they just get totally wrecked. And let me explain why. A Bitcoin whale just shorted $100 million worth of Bitcoin. $100 million worth. Are big holders expecting a larger drop? A Bitcoin whale placed a $100 million short on November 15th after various on-chain data hints at a whale-induced Bitcoin sell-off throughout the past week. $100 million. First, the seller could get engulfed. This is a couple theories on this and cause a squeeze, which might cause the Bitcoin price to increase, which is what I'm hoping for. I mean, I guess accumulate by the dip kind of a thing. Don't miss out on the opportunity. But, you know, I've been accumulating and at some point I'd like to see it push on that 100,000, 1 million, 10 million kind of dollar uh, position and really be able to start doing something, you know. And again, the hope is that I don't actually have to sell it off. Hopefully more adoption takes place and I'll be able to buy things with Bitcoin in its own native format. First, the seller could get engulfed and cause a squeeze, as we just talked about. The trader wrote, uh, well, secondly, it could continue to apply selling pressure on Bitcoin. Approximately two hours ago, someone aggressive sold almost $100 million worth on Bybit. A third of the sales are open. It's personally pretty curious to see what happens if the seller shorter does get engulfed or if he is let free. Meanwhile, other major exchanges have spotted large deposits over the last 24 hours. This isn't good. So it's not just one person with 100 million. If there's a lot of other people that are doing these deposits onto the exchanges, that means that they're looking to try and sell them soon. United States-based cryptocurrency exchange Gemini saw a 9,000 Bitcoin deposit, according to the data from CryptoQuant. Just one exchange, Gemini, which isn't even the biggest one, right? You've got the other big daddies. You've got Binance. You've got Coinbase. There's a lot of them out there. And considering the large Bitcoin deposit into Gemini, which is worth $143 million, a synonymous researcher known as Blackbeard said it is time to be cautious. And definitely makes sense. But you know what? To go right alongside with this, even though there's a lot of people that are looking to try and sell this stuff, what end do you want to be on right now? Are you really wanting to be the people that are selling this because you're concerned if it's going to go down? Because what if you sold it right now and it's a fake out and it just keeps going up? Well, then you're going to have to buy back in at a higher price, right? So you should have just held on unless you don't want to get back in. And by then, you're going to notice it just keeps going up more and more and more, and you're going to have regret. So holding your current position gives you the most security in knowing that you're not losing your cryptocurrency. It may lose value, but as we've seen historically with cryptocurrency, it comes back and it actually goes even higher, right? 
So buying the dips, accumulating, dollar cost averaging, this is what a lot of people tend to do. This is what I personally do. I'm not a financial advisor, so you're more than welcome to take whatever routes you guys want. And it's just my own opinion. So that's one thing to take in mind, right? But then you got people like this, Grayscale. They just bought $240 million more in Bitcoin, the largest capital raise week ever. Grayscale, which runs the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, GBTC, bought this week another 15,114 Bitcoin. I'll say that again. They bought 15,114 Bitcoin, almost a quarter of a billion dollars with a B. GBTC holds 481,711 Bitcoin, which seems kind of confusing because I read later on. So if you guys have clarification why I'm seeing two different numbers with this, something is just not clicking right with me. Uh, representing 62% of all Bitcoins in the ownership of publicly traded companies. So they, as far as publicly traded companies go, they own more than 50%. Grayscale this week bought 15,114 Bitcoin, 241 million, which matches up with what they set up above. Bringing the total number of Bitcoin the company owns to 506,000. 506,000. This is where I'm confused. You got 481,000. You had 15,000. That's 96, 496,000. But they said 506,000 right here. So I don't know where the uh, discrepancy took place with that. Still pretty close to one another, but not completely accurate from what I could tell. Or $8.1 billion dollars. Over $8 billion invested into Bitcoin. The company now manages a total of $10 billion worth of cryptocurrency. Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, which was created in 2013, is the company's biggest trust. The total value of assets managed by Grayscale Bitcoin Trust now exceeds $8.2 billion. GBTC holds 481,711 Bitcoin, which corresponds to 62% of the 814,359 uh, Bitcoin in the ownership of publicly traded companies. So absolutely massive. And see, this is also very important news, not only because we know that somebody just bought a whole bunch, but then when you talk about moments like this, like, hey, we're trying to sell a hundred million dollars and we're shorting, we're shorting it, right? Uh, we're not selling, sorry. But like, we're looking at the idea that Bitcoin's going to go down and I'm willing to put a hundred million dollars on the bet that it's going to go down. Well, if it starts to go down, and people buy at a lower price, that causes the price to go back up. Who's buying it when it's going down? People like Grayscale. And they did $240 million, which is significantly higher than the $100 million that this other whale position was set up with, right? And then you said it said the 9000 on um, Gemini of the amount of Bitcoin that's been put over there. So there are other companies, there's other people out there that have a lot of money and more and more people are coming in, more billionaires are talking positive about this. The smart money is looking to accumulate these things, right? Somebody out there is looking to take profits. Other people are saying, your loss is my gain. And boy, oh boy, if you want to come back in, you want to buy it back from me, you're going to have to buy it back from me with a higher price. Next thing we got over with Bitcoin also is that if we close out today, it's looking at very high likelihood that we're going to be closing on the three week average on a new high. Take a look at this. This is posted by Macro CRG. Seven hours until the highest three week close in history. And the level that he had set that up with was approximately around 14,500 respectfully, a little bit more than $14,000 which right now we're at 15,960, it's looking pretty darn good. So yeah, uh, setting a whole new standard, right? The highest three week close in history. So literally a brand new record. Even when it hit 20K, we didn't have that happen. So looking very good and promising in that regards too. So let's go ahead and close that out. Let's close this one out. Let's close that one out and get everything cleaned up a little bit as we continue on with this. And then Bitcoin's price action rhymes with 1970 gold market, says Citibank. Citibank also exposed clients to its astronomical Bitcoin target of $318,000 by December of 2021. What? What? All right, me and my roommate, right? Because he doesn't own any Bitcoin. He still hasn't bought any. He regrets the fact that he didn't get any when it dipped down to like 6K when um, I, I first uh, met him and was first talking with him earlier this year, right? I told him, I told him, I told him, and he's like, oh, it'll come back down, it'll come back down, it'll come back down. And like, guess what? Now he's like, yeah, I do regret that I didn't get it back then. I'm like, well, you could get it now. 
you're going to regret it when it goes to 100,000. He's like, it's not going to go to 100,000 until it happens. Then you're going to look back on it and you're going to say, I do regret that I didn't get it back then. And then guess what? And $100,000 is going to be like, you can buy in now. You're like, no, no, no. It's it's definitely too late now. I'll be like, when it hits a million dollars, and then you know what he's going to say? It's not going to hit a million dollars. And it's going to go down from $100,000. And then what? Like, at what point it, does the denial just come to the point where you're like, I should have just listened to you, right? Anyways, Citibank also exposed clients to its astronomical Bitcoin target price of $318,000 by December 2021. Oh, yeah, so the story I was just talking about. So anyways, um, May of next year. If I'm right, then he owes me a really nice dinner. And if I'm wrong, then I owe him a really nice dinner. So we, I, I gave the projection. I was like $75,000 by May of next year. It's just purely speculative. You know, so many things can happen between now and then to just completely change the course. But hey, guys, wish me luck on getting like a really expensive, nice free dinner. Um, history of money and gold. The seeds of the 1970 bull market in gold were sown back in 1944. After World War II, 44 countries signed the Bretton Woods Agreement, which shaped the global currency market until 1973. The agreement pegged the U.S. dollar to gold and all the other currencies against the dollar. It attempted to build a regime where the U.S. dollar was equivalent to gold as a reserve currency, and the U.S. became quite successful in achieving this vision. However, with global industrialization and inflation in the dollar, the preference for gold and other currencies began growing. This caused a gold rush by 1970 as people rushed to swap their bills for the precious metal. Hence, in 1971, U.S. President Richard Nixon broke the ties between greenbacks and gold, giving birth to the fiat regime that we now know. With a relatively free currency market, gold's price grew enormously for the next 50 years. So do you guys see a big correlation going on between gold and Bitcoin? There's a lot of similarities for sure. And Peter Schiff, I really doubt you're watching my video, especially of all videos that's going on. But I hate to break it to you. There's more and more evidence that Bitcoin is better as a store of value than gold. And we're seeing all these percentage gains. And it's not the first time that this has happened. And you look at it even just this year alone. You look at what happened last year, right? Off of those major drop downs, but still new higher lows and still moving forward. This price target, what do you guys think? 318,000 by December of 2021 of next year? With the way that everything's happened with COVID, if you went and mentioned this number before COVID, I think a lot of people would be like, it could hit that eventually, but not this soon. Like we would need to have some sort of global economic crisis and causing hyperinflation. And guess what? We literally have that going on right now. I mean, 22% of the entire United States money that's been printed in all of its history was printed this year. 22% ever since we started this country, right? I don't know where you guys are from. I'm in the United States. That's a lot. Okay, now the next thing we're going to talk about and then we're going to take a look at the charts is XRP. XRP has been having a little bit of a gain and a momentum moving forward again. I know a lot of people are really big supporters of XRP. I do own some XRP myself, and it would be awesome if it went up too. You know, again, I want to make profits just like other people do. XRP breaks 27 cents as investors prepare for the Flare Networks snapshot. And this Flare Networks snapshot, as we scroll on down here, uh, is being suggested on December 12th, 2020, as it is right now. In terms of resistance, what they're identifying, we'll take a look at the charts too. XRP has the following short-term price levels to contend with on its path towards 30 cents. You got uh, 0 0.272, 0 0.277, 0 0.281, 0 0.287, 0 0.290, 0 0.290, 0 0.295. Very specific, very close within the same ranges. You know, to me, this is too many levels all just within the same kind of variable space so um key levels i would identify with would be like 0 0.27 and 0 0.28 0 0.29 and then i guess 0 0.295 those so slightly reducing it down and yeah so xrp investors advise to move their digital assets to a confirmed platform that supports the event 
For XRP held at an exchange that is not supporting Flare to receive Spark either A, move it to self-custody before December 12, 2020, and make the claim, or B, move it to supporting exchange before December 12, 2020. You must decide which supporting exchange you trust. We cannot accept liability. This is according to them. There's more information on their uh, Flare Networks website, but here's some of the exchanges that are being listed, and here are some of the wallets that are being listed as well. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at the chart that's going on with XRP, and then we'll talk about Bitcoin, and we'll talk about Orchid. And we're gonna try and move through these pretty smoothly, pretty uh, efficiently, hopefully, for you guys. Key level of resistance that I can identify, we bounced off of here on the daily charts as of yesterday's candle. Uh, we just started a brand new candle. We're now literally one minute in to the new candle. So as you guys can see, it's having a bit of a retracement taking place already within like a one minute time frame. That's, that's pretty hard hitting right there. Uh, going up towards the top though, bouncing off of that high level, just briefly passing above that other level for that day. You can see back here, we also contended it um, back on September 3rd and briefly a breakthrough, a little bit of a bounce off here on a couple other days as well. So I would really keep an eye on that point and on that point that is at approximately 0.2775. Uh, roughly, yeah, 0 0.2774, 775. And it would actually get into the next Fibonacci retracement level if it goes above 0.2717. So we have some room for growth, a bit of a dip down. There's quite a bit of a dip down to go back down to the 21 EMA, which is a big key level of support. That's going to be at 0.2554. Next level of Fibonacci retracement on the drop down is 0.2617. And this actually looks like it's pretty important as well because that is very, very close in line with that bottom level of support just on this ascending wedge pattern. Keep in mind that the ascending wedge pattern suggests a reversal and for a further price correction going back down. The RSI is also suggesting that it's on the verge of being overbought. And so for a potential correction to take place and a continuation down, it might be happening. The uh, volume that you guys see down on the bottom here, you can see it has shifted a little bit. It was having a progressive movement down and then started to have a bit of a curvature and a little bit of a price going back up into this direction. So volume increase could mean for some more volatility. Uh, all that calm still waters are starting to shift a little bit and which direction that this is gonna take place, we'll have to see. Three days of positive green candles. We haven't seen three positive day candles on XRP's history since back starting on October 17th. So um, almost one month ago, uh, where there's been some back and forth with a large portion of this being in the red, and then a couple really good green candles pushing it back up in that Fibonacci retracement, and then eventually breaking through into the higher levels past the 0.5 on the Fibonacci retracement. So keep an eye out on those levels I just mentioned, guys, roughly around 0 .20, uh, roughly 26 cents and then approximately 27 cents and then um, almost 28 cents. Uh, I mentioned the specific levels earlier for you guys. Okay, now next one we got going on is Bitcoin. Bitcoin still above the 21 EMA, two red day candles and currently in a position it is still showing red, but you see that we do have wicks that take place on the bottom. This could be the very bottom and a progressive movement up would still reveal that bottom red. Do we have a further correction take place? It is a Sunday again. Normally the waters tend to be pretty still for a weekend and then going into Sunday evening, we sometimes see some higher volatility, but the market is a bit unpredictable, right? Somebody could be coming in here and throwing a bit of a curveball. So I'd really uh, keep an eye out on it and we'll see if there's any other major relevant news taking place. So it could have a further drop correction down to approximately $14,900. It's a key level of support that we wanna make sure that it doesn't go down below. If it goes below that, then we could even see it drop all the way down. Now this would be pretty darn extreme, but down to roughly around $11,370. That's something that I'm sure many of us don't want to see. Of course, if you're looking to buy in more or if you're shorting it, then you would want it. It depends on what your position is with this, right? Looking at the RSI, it is resting at the overbought uh, position, but it has had a bit of a correction down. So that is something to kind of keep in mind, guys. And the volume has had some moments of high volatility. 
just kind of keep an eye on where everything is going. It could have a potential rise, could have a potential break. We're seeing a lot of things that historically we don't have much to reference to. So if you wanted a more in-depth analysis into this, guys, it's a lot more of speculation. And I'm trying to be less speculative and more based on like the bare bone essential fundamental facts so that you're not gambling as much. We want to take calculated risks, right? And so, yeah, if we break above this level right here at 16,550 approximately, 500, well, like 16,533, we get above that level and we can rest above it and establish itself. Again, like ideally two, three days, candle is above, cool. It signifies even more of a correction movement up. It's actually gonna shift that top line for the resistance as well overall on the daily and uh, just put itself in a much better position to have a further continuation on towards that previous range back during the 2017-2018 rally. So very exciting stuff right now. Waiting to see how some of the big institutional players are going to decide to move their money. And that could have a big impact, guys. So we're seeing some of the news. The news sounds very positive for the most part. The fact that some of the whales are trying to put their stuff on the exchanges, but also the fact that some people that are whales that are having tons of money are willing to buy it up just kind of cancels out that mentality. You got more adoption going on. We could see some drops take place. But, you know, again, right now, things are overall looking good. And again, red candles are expected corrections are expected you pull back a little bit before you have a further continuation on and if we just had green 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 when that pullback does happen it's going to be huge and people will freak out and a lot of people will get weak hands and they're going to say oh okay i i can't wait for it to go down anymore what if it goes to zero and they're going to cut their losses um, and take their profit but then next thing you know it starts to recover and they're like well i got to buy back in now I should have just held on, right? Be careful, be very careful, guys. Never invest more than what you're willing to invest and risk to lose, or never invest more what than what you're willing to lose. <laughs> I've been talking for a bit here. And again, if you guys are enjoying the content, please don't forget to hit like if you haven't yet already done so. We can try to get this to 50 likes at least. It takes half a second, a quarter of a second, and it honestly helps us out a lot in the search and discoverability. And uh, if you can turn on the bell notifications so you know when we got new videos that go up. And also feel free to subscribe. Now, last one we're going to talk about, Orchid. Looking over at this bad boy. It's been doing what I've been talking about. Hasn't established itself above the 21 EMA. And for that reason, I'm still bearish on this, guys. And I love Orchid. I believe in it very strongly. I think it's got a very promising future. I'm, I'm pretty heavily invested into it, too. And, and like... I want to say, hey, it's going to the moon, but it's fundamentals, and my fundamentals have been holding true. So until new major news comes out that suggests otherwise, until it establishes on the baseline, in Orchid's case, it really needs to do three days of strong stability above the 21 EMA so that we feel less inclined of a pump and dump situation which we've been seeing historically. And that yellow line is that 21 EMA for any of you guys that may not know. And historically, the 21 EMA has been a big key fundamental of showing a level of resistance or support on the daily candles. So right now it's showing a red. It's looking like it's trying to drop back down into the level of resistance, falling back within the wedge pattern itself again, potentially having another retest down on the Fibonacci retracement that we had back on November 4th, which was at approximately 19 cents, 0 0.1950. So if it can break above, guys, right now the big level it's got to get above is 0.2267. You get above 0.2267, you can close out on the daily there nice little green candle and then we move on from there right so approximately 50 cent roughly gain from where it's currently at as of the time that i'm recording this video with the 0.2212 and yeah guys that's gonna go ahead and do it um i guess last note is just that it looks like it's starting to form another consolidated space right here i'd say the the first major level of support before it has a further drop all the way down it's probably going to be right about at this level well actually more keely yeah, this makes more sense, uh, approximately at 0.2174, and then another major level resistance taking place at 0.2108. We can see some previous movements taking place back here, 
but that first position seems the most realistic before it might bounce off, which I think it'll more than likely bounce off. Unless we carry this all the way through December and all those coins that are getting ready to drop, then we might see it have a further crash on that. I'm a bit concerned about that, but hopefully people hold on. Hopefully the staking system plays out a lot more strongly. Uh, hopefully the nano payments and the marketplace stuff that's been discussed is something that's gonna roll out sooner rather than later. And um, yeah, the Windows thing is probably the soonest thing we're gonna have coming around the corner. It seems like everything's ready to go. They're probably just waiting for a good time or, or waiting for some final written approval thing that makes everything good. But guys, thank you again so much for tuning in. Thank you guys for all the likes. Thank you guys for the subs, the hitting the like button, um, hitting the bell button and drop a comment down below. Let me know what you thought about all of this news and information. Is there anything else that came out either at the time when I'm recording this or afterwards that you think is really important? I want to build a strong community and I will look at the comments. I don't always reply to them guys, but I do look at them regardless. And I encourage you guys to go see what other people are saying, whether you agree with me or you disagree with me. This is about a community. This is about us trying to help each other out so we can move our lives forward. And I do learn from other people as well. That's how I got to where I am today. Thank you guys so much. And I will see you guys in the next episode.